pretty cool. Now here's Mike. All right, thank you. Hey, we're talking about your money once again this morning, and we're also continuing to talk about ways that you maybe need to get your house in order. If God forbid you do kick the bucket, it's going to happen to all of us one day. Stuart Welch joins us to explain the downside of payable on death agreements, POD. So first of all, tell us what a POD is. So Mike, you think about your checking account at the bank, you think about your brokerage account. Uh, most people don't do anything about that, and mm -hmm. then when they die, those accounts move according to their will. But you can use a payable on death account. It's like a beneficiary designation. So you can do a POD mm -hmm. and make it say to a child, and it'll go directly to that child. And in doing so, it avoids probate, which is what happens when you die and uh, it goes under your will. Mm -hmm. You avoid the time and the cost of probate. So a lot of people think it's a really good thing, but it's got a lot of traps. Yeah, well, you, and I guess you could just go to your bank and you can you can fill out the forms there. And, or you can. The money. Okay, but now the, let's talk about this, the traps, the unintended consequences. What are they? So the first thing, let's just use an example. So you do, uh, you, you're going to leave, you, want, you know you want to leave something to your child. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so you do a POD to that child, but let's, if we made it complicated, we'd say let's have three children. Okay. So now you do a POD to three children and one of them predeceases you. Like at one bank, the, what would have happened is your money would have gone to the remaining two and your grandchildren by the deceased child would get nothing. Under a will, normally that child would get that would get that uh, parent's okay. share. Right. So you have to be very careful. There's no uniformity, so it can be different across agreements. And so the, the answer is, is that you need to be very careful and you need to make a list of all of your assets and trace how they're going to get to their ultimate destination, whether it's a person, whether it's a trust, or whether it's a charity. You literally make a list and say, how is this getting there? And then you can see if it's doing what you want it to do. Okay. Uh, and you have, and I, it's complicated, so you've got to monitor it also. And my recommendation is you're going to need professional help. And typically, we would use an attorney uh, that specializes in estate work. Because there's a lot of complication. With the, with the, with the, the devil's in the details, as they said. It is. And it's it very is. complicated. And you've got to have somebody who knows what they're doing to go through it. All right, so th th that was kind of the takeaway from it. Just, but again, just reiterate, like, who would want to use a POD? Well, I think if it was a really simple, if you know you have an account and you know exactly where you want it to go. Okay then, and it's pretty simple, then uh -huh. I think that you could do that. But again, you want to monitor that very, very closely. All right, real quickly as we close, we want to mention the free Alabama Money Expo. It's coming up. It is free, almoneyexpo.com. So go to the website. There's free one-on-one -on -one advice. There's free uh, seminars on investing, on estate planning, on uh, tax help. There's help for grants for college. It is all free. It's at Carver High School, March the 5th. All right. AL.com, almoneyexpo.com. AL, 